What's up guys? Welcome back to Seize the Speed for another review. Today to the left side of me, I have a 2021 Mustang EcoBoost Premium. Let's get into it. Now, as you may know, this is the only car Ford makes nowadays. Everything else is a truck and an SUV. So this is pretty rare to see. It's a good car to have in a segment that is almost done. The Camaro is going next year. You have the Challengers, Chargers, those are getting axed. So this is your only choice right here. And the new one just got released, but this is the S550 we have today. And I'm gonna go over some of the features, uh, You know, especially this one is a premium. So we're gonna see if some of those extra features are worth buying. We're gonna do a driving test, see how that 2.3 liter EcoBoost feels, uh, connected to the 10 speed automatic on this particular one. So as far as the exterior of this car, it is pretty close to the GT variant minus the front bumper. Um, the hood even gets the vents on this car. You have the premium package wheels. I could honestly take them or leave them. They're all right. As far as the S550 chassis goes, this is the facelift. So this is the 0.2 version. And, you know, people have controversial opinions. Some people say the first variant was more classic, more smooth lines. This one, they kind of went crazy with these angles down here. Um, I think it's all right. I think it's an attractive looking Mustang. Looking at the 2.3 Eco Beast, as you can see, there's a whole lot of room down here, which means this car, you know, definitely had a V8 in it at some point. But this thing fits pretty good in here. You know, it's probably pretty easy to work on this thing. You can see everything down there. As far as the specs goes, this thing is supposedly makes 310, but it doesn't really feel like it. We'll get into that a little bit when I drive it. Another complaint I have is what the hell Ford? Come on with this thing. It, how much how much would it cost to just add hood struts? This hood is actually heavy as hell, like compared to the aluminum hood on the 350Z. This is a pain to open. And then to prop it with that, especially if you're holding tools or something, it's an actual pain. So as far as the keys to this car, we happen to have a BMW key hanging around. And I think Ford's been uh, looking at something else other than their own homework. I mean, it's almost completely identical, but this key has a little bit more buttons on it. You get your uh, remote start on this car, which is pr pretty nice. We also have uh, keyless entry, so unlocks with your key in your pocket. And here's the interior. So as you can see, this is the premium model. We have the Mustang lettering over there illuminating pretty nice leather seats you have leather in the doors feels a little bit nicer than the base model that they sell with cloth everywhere now coming back here to the trunk space of the mustang as you can see the opening is not all that big but it is actually a decent size for a uh, you know coupe however this car is longer than the average coupe so it's to be expected but you could comfortably fit a bunch of stuff back here. It'll make a nice daily. All right, now something we don't usually do is backseat reviews, but this one has one, so let's see. All right, so I am about 5'10", sitting behind myself. There is almost no leg room. Let's see if we can close this. Um, give me one second. Ah, okay, come over here. So, as far as headroom goes, this is my head touching the roof. Unless I go back here, then I'm touching the glass. Um, <laughs> yeah, so if you're this tall and claustrophobic, don't sit in the back. My knees are tucked right up against the seat. So, I would say not made for adults. Let's actually hop in and check this thing out. Here, all the four cylinder goodness of this car coming to life and the oh so familiar Ford Chime. So, as far as the S550 Mustangs go, uh, it's always a familiar place to be. It's pretty nice. These seats make it more nice and cozy in here. You have electric driver's seat and you also have electric passenger seat. We have a little bit of ambient lights in here and I don't know if you can see down there. Excuse the dirty shoes. This is a solid stereo. Honestly, I can't complain about any of this stuff. Pretty fast, pretty responsive. You got your Apple CarPlay. Although, if you get the base, you do not get this. You get a tiny screen, which is an absolute pain in the butt. So just the screen itself is actually worth the upgrade. Another thing that you get with this car is heated and ventilated seats, which is super awesome. 
Now I know that it's a pretty big uh, cost upgrade, but I think the premium package is definitely worth it. If you want the economy of this car and you also want a nice cabin for daily driving, this is definitely it. As far as the gauges go, it's pretty simple. None of the stuff that the GT gets with the digital dashboard, but it's still intuitive, gets the job done. Now in this car, we get a mode selector. And as far as the modes go, if you look in here, we have Sport, Sport Plus, Track, and Drag. You have drag in a four-cylinder Mustang. How cool is that? Another thing you get in this thing is your steering. You can adjust it since you have electronic power steering like everything else. So you have comfort, normal, and you have your sports steering. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this thing is equipped with the 10-speed auto. While this thing is much superior to the old automatic in these cars with the V6s, it still leaves something to be desired, especially when it's being compared to the German counterparts or even the American ones like Dodge that's been using a German transmission. This is not anywhere near as good as the eight-speed ZF, but you know, it gets the job done. I see where Ford's, Ford's heading with this transmission, but I'll talk a little more about it when we get to driving. And speaking of driving this thing, it's as good a time as any. Let's go. All right, driving the EcoBoost. Let's see. So first impressions, this thing shifts way too much. Like it's always shifting. This thing is always shifting. 10 gears isn't anything to be messed with. Every couple thousand RPMs. Upshift, upshift. <laughs> it's a good transmission, but it's nowhere near as responsive as some of the new stuff, some of the more improved transmissions but for their daily drivability you can't expect a whole lot let's see if we can hit it right here a little bit it's a little wet so pretty sure this guy has boost by gear because all the power comes in at third gear first and second it's really subdued it doesn't give you absolutely everything it has it feels really sluggish off the line which is what I think you know they did in purpose because not everyone driving this car is going to be an enthusiast that's a little safer so if you want that extra power you might have to tune it transmission tune or some sort of a uh, fuel mapping to get this thing fixed so driving around town it's actually super quiet in here you don't really hear much it's a nice cabin to be in does a pretty good job of eliminating road noise, even though it's a coupe. Not a little bit of slip. So these tires are actually pretty thin for 300 horsepowers, which I still question this thing being a 300 horsepower car. Like, it doesn't feel all that fast. Maybe it's just because of the gearing. Another thing with this transmission is just, sometimes when you want power, it's in a gear that it has to like shift like three gears to figure out where it wants you to be. And it takes a little while and it just jerks you back and forth until it gets to that gear. I feel like this transmission could be better. Like it kicks it into such a high gear seat. Like it's in seventh right now at 36 miles per hour, which when you get on it, it just feels like you're in fifth gear on a, on a six speed manual. It feels like it, it gets that shudder from being in too high of a gear before it actually kicks down and goes. You can eliminate a little bit of that if you drive it in manual mode. In this thing, say you're in seventh, cruising around and you wanna roll back, you're gonna have to just click, 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 you know, drop a bunch of gears at the same time. And then you sometimes knock it down to second, which is a gear that I feel like the boost is limited on. So it's a little confused on the power delivery side. All right, so all that talk aside, we're gonna kick it into Sport Plus. I'm gonna drop a couple gears and see what this thing got. Third gear pull. Upshifts are pretty good, pretty fast. Yeah, so 
So when you put it in sport, the response gets a lot better. Mustang. I mean, I understand that this is the base engine powertrain, but it's kind of dull because of that. It doesn't actually let you use everything that you have. I'm pretty sure this engine has a little bit more to give, but the car is pretty restricted. Take this thing into some turns. This thing has a bunch of good safety features. You got your blind spot monitoring detection, and you got a not necessarily a collision avoidance, but at least a collision warning when you get too close to a car. Pretty nice. So we're gonna take it into our first corner. I'm scared of that camera falling, but we're gonna be brave. That was pretty good for how heavy this thing is. The steering feel though, honestly, it's a pretty bad dead center. And let's see which mode it's in. Okay, we're gonna put it in sport see if that fixes it see you have to keep your eye on the shift if you're used to driving anything else you're used to dropping one gear and being good this thing it takes more than one gear it gets better but the dead like it gets more weighted but then the weight lets go in the center like right when you want to have the feel. Drag mode and we hit it. Uh, slip, 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 and we're off. Yeah, so that boost by gear situation just really ruins the ruins the acceleration off the line. It is to limit wheel spin, I'm pretty sure. So you know, because all kind of, you're gonna get all kinds of customers buying this car. It's not just gonna be people trying to drive it hard, so. You want to keep grandma safe, I understand it. As a whole, this thing drives pretty nice. It'll make a pretty good daily driver, get decent gas mileage while giving you a little bit of a sportiness. However, it's not the best interior quality. You know, you can't expect um, Japanese or German quality in this interior, lots of plasticky stuff. And I forgot to mention this back part of the seat, even on the premium is still manual, even though you get automatic seats. Alright guys, and that's all I got for this 2021 Mustang EcoBoost. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have a Mustang. What do you think about this car? Um, let me know if you have a manual or this 10-speed auto or the older 6-speed and what's your experiences with this transmission handling wise with this car. If you agree or disagree, I want to hear all of it. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more reviews. Peace out, have a great day, and I'm out.